But tonight I want to continue in the vein in which I've been ministering and I pray that you'll be blessed. I'm going to say a couple of things. I see people fanning, so that means hurry up. Um, but I, I want to say a couple of things to you tonight because midweek service, and I thank God that we shout and you know praise God and we should and it's good and it's fitting and it's right. But more importantly for me, it's important that you leave here with knowledge, that you leave here informed that you leave here uh, better than you came in terms of who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen? And most of you, do you all still have your card, the hand that I made for you? Remember a few services ago? You should still have that with you. Uh, how many don't have it? That'll let me know you don't come regularly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but those of you who do have it, if you'll pull it out and share share with those who just happened to miss that particular service. They're here all the time. They just miss that service. So don't look at them funny. But I'm going to tie, uh, I'm going to tie that handout in with the message tonight. Can somebody say amen? Well, stand to your feet. This, this might be good. Stand to your feet. Get your card, your handout that I gave you. If you already have it. Now I know some of you had it, but you left it at home. Okay. And I know some of you had it, but you forgot where you put it. All right, no problem. But, but for those of you who do have it, bless you. May the Lord bless you specially uh, for holding on to this good information. Now, would you share it with your friend? They can pay you later in the parking lot. But share it with them right now. Now, you all remember, so we all can get on one accord. You all remember the illustration. I don't know if they're prepared to do it tonight. But I had an illustration on the screen where the dog was chasing his tail. You, you all remember that? And the first time I was, went on this particular message, we had, a, we had a dog that was steel. And I didn't think it had the effects like if something was moving. So the next time I was privileged to stand before you and I considered always a privilege to stand before you. Uh, one of the greatest insults a speaker can do is stand before an audience and have nothing to give them. That's, that's, that's the rudest thing you can do is stand before your audience and you haven't studied. That's the greatest insult that you can bestow upon an audience that they took the time, the consideration and the fortitude to come hear what you have to say, only to hear what comes out of your mouth is clear you haven't studied. And so I gave the illustration where you saw the dog going around chasing his tail. You, you all remember that illustration? And then I shared with you that by and large or too high of a percentage of Christians, that's how they live. There are Christians. Notice I call them Christians because the Bible calls them Christians. They're just Christians who are living beneath their privileges. There are Christians. I'm hearing a back something. Oh, that's the dog? Was, was something on the screen? Oh, well, go ahead and do it. I, it was? Okay, well, I'm looking at a screen, too. Oh, there we go. Now, now we're seeing the same thing. There you go. That's James. Yeah, that's Shirley. Get the name of the person next to you. Ask them their name. Yeah, say, that's you on the screen. Call them by name. James, that's you. That's you. Come on, get their name. I said, get their name. What's your name? Betty, James, Shirley. Come on, say, Shirley. Come on, you, once you get their name, call their name. And say, that's you on the screen. Okay. I'm so glad you're laughing. Because I want to share some truths with you. Because the word of God will change your life. The word of God will change your life. The word of God will change. I'm not talking about being religious. But the word of God and acting upon the word of God faithfully and consistently, it will literally change the conditions of your life. The word of God will. The word of God will. As a matter of fact, 
You can't hear the word consistently and confess the word consistently and live by the word consistently and stay in a bad place. You can't constantly hear the word, meditate on the word, confess the word, and do the word and stay poor. Come on, say amen to the truth. You can't stay sick because there's healing power in the word of God. Here's another one. You can't stay stressed. I didn't say you couldn't get stressed. I said you can't stay. Because the word of God will drive it out, whatever's worrying you. You can't stay depressed. Are you listening to me? You cannot stay depressed if you're consistently hearing the word of God, meditating the word of God, saying the word of God, and acting upon the word of God. You cannot stay depressed unless there's some mental imbalances. Come on, say amen to the truth. Because with some people, they're saved, they're Christians, but they have some mental challenges. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Are you, are you listening to me? Some people have to fight depression and oppression because it's a generational curse in their family. Nothing wrong with their mind. They're, finding a, they're fighting a generational demon. They just have a natural bent in that family to act depressed. To mope. Come on now. Are you listening to me? And, and it's nothing wrong with their mind. They're just dealing with a generational spirit. That oppresses that family. The child is two and three years old and already know how to act depressed. And can't read. Can't put together a sentence. But they know how to be depressed. And because the secular world don't know what they're dealing with, they drug them up. Where in some cases, it's not a drug that's their answer. They're, they're, being, they're, they're dealing with a generational demon in that family. Are you listening to me? And for some of you, the reason it is so hard for you to break free from poverty is because it's generational in your family. And the devil will fight you with everything he's got because he knows if one of you get loose and find out that the grass truly is greener on the other side and it's not artificial turf. That there's a possibility that you will go back and set other family members free in your family. Because once they see you free, they know the possibilities for them to be free is possible. So the devil will fight you. Are you listening to me? You have your, your hand out? Notice what it is. By faith, come on. I receive what Christ Jesus has already provided. Say it again. By faith, I receive what Christ Jesus has already provided. Okay, you've already put it in memory now. Look at me. Say it again. By faith, I receive what Christ Jesus has already provided. All right, say it out loud like you mean it. Say it again. Say it one more time, make the devil mad. By faith, I receive what Christ Jesus has already Say it loud when you're speaking to generational curses and generational demons. Speak it out loud. By faith, I receive what Christ Jesus has already provided. Oh God, 
When you said it like that, demons stood still. Because that name, the name of Jesus, will make every devil back up off of you. And if you say it out of your mouth and mean it in your heart, something will be released in your spirit. Say it, woman. Make sure they can hear you over there. Make sure they can hear you over here. Say it again. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise and thank you. By faith, I receive what Christ Jesus, come on now. Oh, 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 oh. That's the subject of discussion. That's the subject of discussion. Because the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent Take it by force. Oh God. So we have been under this new covenant operating like we're under an old covenant. Because the old covenant tells you to wait. The new covenant tells you to take. Ooh Jesus. The old covenant tells you to wait. And some of you have been waiting. But the new covenant, say new. new. See, the Bible says that we have a better covenant established on better promises. The new covenant says we can take it. Yes? Well, what can we take? Because you and I... We can only take, say take. take. Yeah, take means take it. Take it means perhaps somebody has something that belongs to you. And you don't have to beg them for it. And you certainly don't pay them for it. You take it because it's rightfully yours. And you will not have it until you take it. And when you try to take it, there may be some resistance. But greater is he that is in you. You're well able to take it. But what can you take? We can go out of these doors shouting down I-435, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Well, what can you take? Because you can only take what Christ Jesus has provided. Now, you know why most people aren't shouting? It's sad to say, but most Christians don't study the Bible. Oh, they might read a little bit here and there, you know, and I'd say turn to this book and they'll turn, but, you know, they go home, that's the, pretty much the extent of it. And then have the nerve to listen to 107 and 103. And I'm not knocking those stations. But if you listen to that all the time, you're not going to operate in any power. You're not going to be bold to declare what's rightfully yours. Are you all listening to me? So we can only take and we can take it. Tell three people, you can take it. Come on, tell three people, you can take it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that was three unbelievers. Find you three believers. Find you three believers. Say, you can take it. You can take it. <laughs> now look at them again. Say, I don't know what you can take, but you can take it. <laughs> yeah. We're going we're gonna to find out tonight. We're going to find out tonight. But I want you to know from the beginning, you can take it. Whatever Jesus has provided, if it's not manifested in your life, Jesus is not coming again to give it to you because he's already given it to you. And the reason you're not enjoying it, you don't know what it is. And when you don't know something belongs to you, you beg. And that's 
the consistency and the culmination of most of our prayers. That's why a lot of things we call prayer, God doesn't even hear us because we're begging. And it's annoying when somebody's asking you for something that you've already said is theirs. I said it's annoying. So some of you think you're praying. You're not praying at all. You are annoying God. you down there begging and pleading, thinking that if you beg enough, he'll, he'll have mercy on you. Think if you fast enough that you'll force his hand. Oh, geez, can I go ahead and get in trouble? And then we're going to sit down and get into the word. Your faith does not move God. And I know we've been taught that, but your faith does not move God. Ooh, Jesus. You ought to see your face. Somebody give me my Kodak 100. <laughs> Please have a seat. Let's get into it. You're going to learn something now. Because you're going to stop all this begging and pleading. Because you don't mind. Because it means that much to you. Ain't too proud to beg. That's good in the song, but it doesn't work when the devil show up at your door. Can somebody say amen? Amen. So tonight, I want to continue in the vein of which we've been teaching. I've shared with you in in former lessons. Could you put up my nugget number one, please, real quick? And I got about 30, 30 minutes, 25 minutes to get where I need to go. Ready? Read. So that the new people can hook up with us. Ready? Read. Oh, Jesus. Would you read that one more time? Faith. My God. Number two. So it, that lines up with what we said earlier. You can only take what Christ Jesus has already provided. Can somebody say Amen. Are, are, are we all together? Are you learning anything? L- let's, let's move forward now. Faith is simply your positive, not negative, but your positive response to what God has what? Already. Has already provided. Say this, by grace, by grace God, God has, already has already provided, provided for, me for me everything I need. Everything I need. Say it one more time. By grace, God has, God has already provided everything that I need. Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. If you could just get that uh, blower off of me, just, just a hair, just make it toward the back of me, I'd appreciate it. If you could just move it. Yeah, turn it that way. Thank you so much. A little bit more toward me, please. Good, good. Thank you so much. Would you all give my baby brother a great big God bless you? Yeah. Amen. Some of you don't have a clue of how joyful it delights my heart every time I see him and just to be able to call his name because I called his name for years and he wasn't present. But to be able to call his name or say something or make some gesture toward him and he's physically here to make a response, brings great joy to my heart. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. God is good. Look at uh, let's Hebrews chapter 11. Are you there? Hebrews 11, we're going to learn something now. Verse number one. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things. Now, faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not perceived by the senses. 
Now, faith is the substance of what? Of things hoped for. Anybody got hope for some things? And hope is good. Hope is good. Come on, anybody got hope? I hope you do. You don't want to run with anybody who don't have any, any hope. That's a dangerous person, a person who don't have any hope. Now, hope won't get you there. Uh, this is what hope will do. Hope is uh, the, 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 the thing that will help you on a sinking ship smile while you're drowning. Because hope is a goal setter. Faith is the one that will bring into materiality what you're hoping for. Are you listening to me? Hope is a good thing because without hope, you don't have anything to work your faith toward. Hope is a goal setter. Amen? But faith will get you to the other side. Somebody say amen to this truth. So by grace, God has already provided how much how much how much how much is everything I got to get you to think I got to get you to think tonight because if he has provided everything you need already why are you looking for it somewhere and why do you believe that it has to come Because for you to believe that it has to come, that means it hasn't been sent yet. That's why I'm saying to you, and I know I was messing with some of your religion, when I said God doesn't respond to your faith. Your faith does not move God. In other words, you operating in faith doesn't cause God to do something for you. Why? Because he can't do anything for you. Everything you need, God has already provided it. Everything. Everything. He's not going to come down from the third heaven because you're praying and fasting and do something that you've asked him to do. Because anything you've asked him to do According to the word of God, he's already done it. You have already been healed. Good God of mercy. Your needs have already been met. No weapon formed against you will never work. There is a hedge of protection around you wherever you go. Good God of mercy. You don't have to look to see if he's there. He said, I will never leave you. So you're never by yourself. When you go home tonight and go in your bedroom and you start operating in the pillow ministry. And with your natural eyes, it looks like nobody's in the bedroom but you. I want you to know according to the word of God, somebody else is in there. Because he said he would never leave you. You can tell the people who believe it and those who don't. Because when you feel lonely, you look lonely. You look sad. But when you know you always got company. Ooh, Jesus. When you know you always got company. changes your perspective. Can somebody say amen Amen. to this truth? So faith enables the believing soul to treat the future as present. Somebody say, say that again. Faith enables the believing soul to treat the future, good God of mercy, as present. And the invisible as seen. That's why when you are a person of faith and you talk faith, natural people think you're crazy. 
because you talk like you already got it. Good God of mercy. And they don't understand it because they walk by sight. And we walk by and not by. (laughs) But because we are people of faith, God has promised that he won't let us down. Because what we're believing God for is already there. Ooh, Jesus. Is, is, this, is this good? Now, let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Go to Romans chapter 4. Yeah, okay, Holy Ghost. Work on that a little bit more. We got a couple people who are, who are kind of lagging behind. Okay, go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Let me work on a little more for them. I don't want to lose nobody. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, I'm sorry, verse number one. Wow. So based upon what we've just read in Hebrews 11, 11, one, mother, God doesn't respond to our faith then. All right, let me cl- make, a, make, it, make it clear. We've been taught from religion that if we pray enough and just keep agitating God enough, and if we fast enough, and if we do enough of the right things, we'll make God move. That if God can just see me in my condition, how I'm praying day and night, night and day, old covenant. Yes, sir. That somehow he'll look down on the, over the banisters of heaven and feel sorry for me. And then do something. Come on now. If God does something for you, that means he hadn't done it. If God comes and do something for you, that means when he said it was finished, it wasn't finished. God, this is making you think. This will make you pray right. Matter of fact, it'll cut out all them long hours of prayer of saying nothing. Come on, I didn't say what he need to pray, but I just want you to know long hours don't move God. Matter of fact, your biggest challenge with them long prayers is sleep. And we're all guilty. I didn't fell asleep. Wake up, Lord, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Have you all done? Lord, Lord, forgive me. And then fall out again. Oh, Lord, I'll try it again tomorrow night. Because I've been religiously taught that somehow if I bombard God with my words, that I'll make him do something that he hadn't planned to do. Well, the truth of the matter Before I ever came to Jesus, can I work this thing? Before your mama and daddy ever got eyes for one another, God saw you. And however you got here, through marriage or whatever, on a one night rendezvous, you were planned. You may not have been planned by your parents, but God planned for you to be here. And before you ever got here, he fixed your life. Good God of mercy. That's why I shared with you before that no matter what's going on in your life right now, that's just a chapter in your total book. That's just a chapter. And I don't say these things to try to solicit any sympathy from you. I'm a blessed man. But there was a time I had holes in my shoes. And I was raised in a house with no water ever. And we never had electricity. And I was raised on an outhouse. 
And I used to dig worms out of the ground and sell to the bait store. Yo, pastor. I would go to school in the first, second, third, and fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and kids would make fun of me because I had holes in my shoes and my clothes were raggedy. And I didn't say that to solicit sympathy from you. I'm just simply saying to you, that was just a chapter. Look at me today, and you will know it was just a chapter. Are you listening to me? And what they didn't know when they were making fun of me and said I wouldn't mean nothing because I was raised on the wrong side of town called the need more section. It was the hood of the hood. And I had it harder than anybody in the hood. But what they didn't know when they were shunning me and didn't want their kids for me to play with their children. True story. And when I would go over to their house to play with their kids, they'd call their kids in the house and leave me in the yard because I smelled. And I was raggedy. And they didn't want their children associating with a little kid like that. But they treated me that way. They didn't mean any harm. They just thought that chapter of my life was the whole book. So don't get mad when people treat you bad because of where you are today. Don't hold it against them. You see, they think that what, where you are today, that's the sum total of your book. Not realizing today is just a chapter. And if you only knew what the next chapter of my life Entailed. You would have spoke to me when you sat down next to me tonight. You wouldn't have put all that room in between us. Treat me like I didn't take a shower. You wouldn't have looked at me funny like I don't belong this close to the front. See, you're judging me on what you think you see. But I want you to know tonight, this is just another chapter in my life. But another chapter is about to be written. And it's going to be greater. It's going to be greater. It's going to be greater. Don't leave me now. Come on, tell somebody, you've been with me this long. Don't, don't turn on me now. Don't, don't quit on me now. Don't, don't run out on me now. Don't count me out now. Another chapter is getting ready to be written in the book of my life. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Can about three people get happy over that truth? So according to Hebrews 11.1, then true faith, say true faith, true faith faith then is simply a response to what God has already done. Already done. True faith then is a response or the right response to what God has already done. By his stripes, I am healed. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. Let me hear somebody who's battling with something in your body tonight. We're going to put the devil on the run concerning your physical body. Listen, Jesus didn't heal you when you confess 1 Peter 2.24. Are you all ready for this? You may be physically challenged today, but Jesus healed you over 2,000 years ago. Yes. 
So if sickness is trying to take control of your body, you have a right to take your healing because Jesus provided it. Are you listening to me? You're walking around like a pauper, walking around here begging, barely able to pay your bills, behind on your rent, your house is in foreclosure, your old people, you're running and dodging, can't come to church on Sunday and have a good praise and worship because when you look around, you owe the person on this side, you owe the person on that side, you go to get your praise on and you see something, oh, oh Lord. <laughs> God never intended for you to live like that. Jesus Christ is your Jehovah Jireh. He was, he is, and he will always be your Jehovah Jireh. You've got to see him with the proper perspective. And if you do, it will change your life. Isn't arrogance of me? Perhaps as I look around this room, Perhaps there might be one or two here who was poorer than me as a child. Maybe. There might be somebody in here who know about cutting wood and gathering kindling. There might be one or two. There may be one or two people in here who know about going out into Mr. Charlie's field with a butcher knife and getting greens out of the field and then taking them to Miss Willa May's house who's a bootlegger and wash your greens and then walk through your neighborhood and sell you a mess of greens to people, 25, 25 cent mess, 50 cent mess, 75 cent mess, and every now and then you stumble upon a gold mine and you may sell a dollar mess if you could get that many greens. See, some of you are looking for, because you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you, most of you don't know what it's like to go to school and kids make fun of you because of the clothes you got on. Most of you, if not all of you in here, you don't know what it's like to go to school and walk in the rain or walk in the snow. And by the time you get to school and you sit down in your desk and then your cardboard newspaper then come out the side of your shoes and then a little girl you're halfway like uh, look down and see your stuff all right and, and make fun of it and then the whole class laugh at you. Yeah. Then you beat up everybody in the class. <laughs> then, the teacher, then the teacher label you. Talk about your pastor. Then the, te- the teacher label you as, as trouble and, and, and all this. And, and, and it's not that, but, but I'm, I'm trying to make them back up off of me. You talk about I'm going to bust you in the mouth. You make fun of my sandwich because it's green and the bread is molded. If you make fun of me, if you tell another ch- child, I'm gonna, we, we're going to fight at 3 o'clock. Some of y'all know what 3 o'clock is. It used to scare you. Sometimes somebody look and say, one, two, three, and you just go to shake it. <laughs> Lived it. No, no one's like for the teacher to come to class and look at all the students. I'm not talking about a mixture. I'm talking about black kids. Yeah. Come into class and look at all the students and look you over and then assign you to the back because of the way you look. That's your pastor. But while they were treating me like that, that was just one chapter. And it's the same with some of you sitting there tonight. People sit down next to you, don't even speak. And sometimes you speak to them, they don't speak back. Because they don't look at you and judge you. Like you're not important. Because they don't know the next chapter. In your book. <laughs> they're going to need you. <laughs> and all of them made fun of me. I could help them today. I could help them today. And you ought to see the expression of some of the people when they see me. And they know I know that they know I know how they treated me. And while they're looking at me, I just look at them. Because they didn't see this chapter. But what I want you to understand, it was the former chapters. 
that gave me the ability to walk in this chapter and not look down on people. Because the way up is to stay down. See, some of you couldn't handle this because you think you're cute. You're struggling with that now with nothing. So in those chapters of my life, God was making me because he knew about this chapter. Good God of mercy. And don't shout on this chapter because this is not the last chapter. But it is responding right in whatever chapter you're in that will determine the next chapter. You see, God will bless you if you won't look down on other people who don't have what you have. God will expand your mind if you won't look down on people with arrogance. As though you're better than them because you know something they don't. Or have something they don't have yet. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. God, God will bless you. Is this blessing anybody? Yes, sir. So true faith is a positive response to what God has already done. Let's go to Romans and wrap it up for tonight. Let's go to Romans. Just let me, just let me have it. You're too far away. Thank you so much. In Romans chapter 4, you there? Look at verse number 16, Romans 4. Oh, this is so powerful. This is, this is, this is so powerful. Wow. You in Romans chapter 4? Look at verse number 16. Ready? Read. Look at it on the screen so we can speak it in unison. Ready? Read. Therefore... Oh, hold on. You read to it. Not only to those who are of the law, that's a group of people. And you and I, we're not of the law. Oh, this is Bible study, so you need to learn, right? Quit fighting people over the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are not written to you and I. The Ten Commandments is Old Covenant. Quit falling out with people over the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is old covenant. It's not written to you. Promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, That's talking about our Jewish brothers and sisters who were under the law. Are you listening to me? That's why when Jesus was walking the earth, he honored the law. Then when he died and rose from the grave, he replaced the law. Now we have one law, one commandment. And that's the law of love. Because if you fulfill the law of love, you'll fulfill all of the Ten Commandments. Is this this helping anybody? Let's go back to the first part of that verse. And and I'll try to wrap it up. It's, It's so important that they understand. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according, oh my, to grace. And this is dangerous. This, this, is, this is dangerous stuff. This is dangerous stuff. Because when we don't know the word, we walk around feeling guilty. 
over mistakes that have been covered and washed away with the blood. See, 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 we struggle with this. Let me help you. Anybody here saved? That's everybody. Okay, put your hands up. Anybody here uh, made a mistake since you've been saved? You put your hand down? Put them down. Anybody here made more than one or ten mistakes since you've been saved? Wait a minute. Hold, hold, hold on. You still saved? Hold, hold, wait, wait. Let's back up. Did you make mistakes before you got saved? Okay. Did you sin before you got saved? Yeah. Anybody here saved now? These lights, you know, they kind of get in your eye. Okay. All right, put your hands down. Have you sinned since you've been saved? Okay, two of you didn't raise your hand to add them up early. Okay. How many of you sinned more than once or twice since you've been saved? See, some of you like this. Okay. okay. Put your hands down. Wait a minute. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Why would Jesus save you knowing that after you received salvation, you were still going to sin. Why wouldn't he wait till you finish sinning? Because if we just parked the car right here, we're all going to hell. Unless somebody's paid a price for us that we can't pay. Ooh, Jesus. And if he's paid the price for us that we can't pay, then we need to find out when did he pay it. Who, Jesus? Did he pay it after I committed my sins? Or did he pay it before I committed my sins? Or did he pay it knowing that in eternity past and future, that when he died and shed his blood, it took care of everything that I would ever do? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who are called according to his, his purpose. And all of us who just confess that scripture has made mistakes, some last night. And we're still saved. And on our way to heaven. And we don't understand it. And because we don't understand it, we try to work our way to something that has been freely given. And because we don't understand it, people who make mistakes stay home. Especially if it is a fresh mistake. I can't get no help in this corner. Because they feel that they've done something that has disconnected them from their salvation. Yet the Bible says all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So where do we get this attitude in church that we can look down on somebody that we know made a mistake? As though somehow in and of ourselves we're righteous. Where did this competitive spirit get in? Where you look at people like, I'm better than her. And I don't do what they're doing. Now I got my issues, but it ain't like that. As though somehow God is measuring. He's so good. She's a little better. And he's way out there. Where do we get this? Religion taught us that. And it was taught directly or subliminally for control. Because if I can make you feel 
like I got something on you, then there's a great possibility that I have avenues to control you. But if you ever find out that you're free in Jesus, oh, hold on. When you find out you're free, when you miss it, you're free in Jesus. When you do right, you're free in Jesus. When you make a mistake, he doesn't kick you out of the line. Because you just discovered you made the mistake. Jesus knew about it over 2,000 years ago and paid the price. That's why Jesus, when he turned to the Father, he said, all those you have given me. Which just simply means not all humanity belongs to God. Jesus said to the Father, Father, all of those that you gave me, I've lost not one. Good God of mercy. So when you get revelation that right or wrong, I belong to him, can't nobody stop you from shouting. No. Okay, now, now some preachers say, oh, preacher, you're, on, you're, you're, you're treading on thin ice. Man, those folks will go out here and do all kind of crazy stuff and say that it's all under the blood. No, 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 no. When you get real revelation as to what Jesus has done for you, it doesn't incline you to want to sin. It inclines you to want to live for it. Mm-hmm. If you're his. Now, I'm not saying go out here and do something wrong, but I, can, I just want to share with you real quick before I sit down one of the signs that will let you know that, 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 that uh, you've been bought with a price, that you, that, 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 you, that you be his merchandise. It's when you make a mistake with your, with your buddies, they just do it and don't think nothing. They're in the club, hey, ho. Oh. And then you do something. And somebody got to go to the bathroom so they can't see you. Lord Jesus. I know this ain't right. I, I'm, so, it, it just don't set with you. It, it's not bothering nobody in the room but you. Because nobody in the room belongs to him but you. Stuff you used to do and it didn't even bother you. Now you just like, can't sleep. Now when you do it, you're all disturbed. Oh, y'all pray for me. Why we didn't pray for you three years ago when you was doing it? You didn't request no prayers? Why are you requesting them? Because cause you're his. There's something about you now that know that that's not the way a child of God who belonged to God should be acting. That's why the Bible says that if you confess, if you confess your sins, he's just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you. Come on, talk to me. Why did Jesus put that clause in there? Because he knew you would not be able to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom walking around with a, with a guilty conscience. And because of some of our erroneous teaching, we're more guilty conscious than we are righteous conscious. And when you get the revelation that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that Jesus alone made you righteous. No, 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 you didn't get that. He made you. You were not righteous. You could be righteous no matter how much you work and try to do right. That's all the law was. When God instituted the law, he knew they couldn't keep it. Are you listening to me? When God instituted the law, he knew the people couldn't keep it. Well, why did he do it? He instituted the law so that they could see that without him, they couldn't make it. And the Old Testament was types and shadows. It was a type of Christ. 
It was a shadow of what was to come. That a redeemer was coming. Are you listening to me? Under the old covenant, they used the blood of animals to cover sin. Because their blood couldn't wash away sin. But the animal was a type of Christ. The blood was a type of Christ. So once a year, the priest would go in and pour out the blood on the mercy seat of God to atone for their sins. Are you all listening to me? But we ought to shout. Because our priest doesn't go in once a year. He went in once and for all. And his blood doesn't cover sin. Because if you cover sin, you can uncover it. It's like cleaning your house because guests are coming. And you sweep the dirt in a pile and sweep it under the rug. The dirt is covered, but the dirt is still in your house. Jesus didn't sweep our sins under the rug. His blood washed it out of your life. And if you're a child of God tonight, I don't care what you've done, what you've said, Jesus' blood has paid the price for you to be free. And the only thing that would hold you in bondage tonight is your religious mind or demonic forces that are trying to hold you in bondage. Because the Bible says, he that the sun sets free. You're free indeed. And the only way you can operate in true faith is to know that you're a free person. That I have a right to the blessings of God, not on the merit of what I've done, but on the merit of what he's done. That's why I'm going to the top. And I love it when my enemies come against me because that lifts me to a higher place. He said he'll make your enemies your footstool. So every time they come against me, I don't get mad. I just step up on what they say. They say some more, I just step up on what they say. They lie on you, I just step up on what they say. They think they don't like you. And listen, it, when people say they don't like you, come on, get some thick skin. Quit, quit falling out over that stuff. Are you listening to me? You can't do what I do and not have people say they don't like you. And the truth of the matter, when they say they don't like me, they don't even know what they're talking about. They don't even know me. As I said before, I'm more than what you see on Sundays and Wednesdays. I'm more than the past. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a good friend. I'm loyal. My word is good. Are you listening to me? So you can't get upset over people. Some people won't like you because you're blessed. Are you listening to me? They'll hate you because you're blessed. They'll hate you because God's hand is on you and they can't touch you. Are you listening to me? They'll get mad because they want you to fall and God keeps holding you up. You got to get some thick skin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Because you cannot prosper. What did I say? You cannot prosper without people talking about you. And some of the people who will talk about you will be some of the people who you thought was your closest friend. That's another way to find out who your real friends are. You get it before they get it. And see how they treat you. Especially if they ask you for something and you say, not right now. Are you, are you listening to me? So you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus right now. Right now. Right now. So what can you take? You can only take what Jesus Christ 
has already provided. Has he provided healing? Yes. If you need it, take it. Yes. Has he provided peace? Yes. If you need it, take it. Has he provided joy? Yes. If you need it, take it. Has he provided prosperity? Yes. If you need it, take come it. on, talk to me. Take you take it. it. You declare in the name of Jesus, this is my last day of being broke. I'm going to break it down more than that. This is my last hour. Since we're breaking it down, I'm going to break it down more than that. This is my last minute. Ain't no sense of food around with a minute. This is my last second. See, I can look at some of you don't believe it. So poverty will stay with you because you can't kick it out until you believe. I don't believe the way my family has lived. I believe what the word says. I'm not going to live like the rest of my family has lived. I'm going to live like what this covenant says. I'm breaking out. And everything the devil stole from me Every bonus I was supposed to have. Everybody who lied and took my promotion and took credit for what I did and got promoted on it. I'm, I'm, t- I'm taking it. Every, everything. Everything that belonged to my daddy and he didn't know the word of God to know it was available. I'm taking that. Everything that belonged to my grandpappy who didn't know what Jesus Christ had provided for him in that AME church. I'm taking it. I'm taking what belonged to me. I'm taking what belonged to my daddy. I'm taking what belonged to my great-granddaddy. I'm taking it all. Everything the devil has stolen in my family from generation to generation. Generation to generation. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one. I am the one. I am the one. I said I am the one. Heavenly Father, say it with me. Heavenly Father, Father, I thank you you that you have already. already. Lift your hands toward heaven. Bow your heads for just a moment. Say with me, Heavenly Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, I thank you you that you have already Healed me. Healed me. By faith, I take my healing and I take it now. You have already given me peace. And in the name of Jesus, I command discouragement, depression, spirit of heaviness. Back up off of me. me. My God God has given me peace. peace. I take my peace now. now. I'm not stressful. I'm I'm peaceful. I'm peaceful. I am peaceful. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I don't have a bad attitude. I don't have a stinky attitude. I am peaceful. The peace of God. It rules and it reigns in my life. And everything in my life that has not been working in the name of Jesus I command you to work together right now for my good thank you God everything is alright thank you Jesus from the top of my head 
to the soles of my feet. My family. It's all right. My sons. It's all right. My daughters. It's all right. Everything. In the name of Jesus. It's all right. It's all right. I thank you, Lord. I can have what I say. I thank you. I will experience checks in the mail, bonuses and increase, debt cancellation. Inheritances, Inheritances. Blessings. 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 Come to me now. Come to me now. From the north, the, north, the, south, the south, the east, the east, and the west. And the west. I, command I command the blessings of God, the blessings of God that have been assigned to me. Assigned to me. Manifest, now. Manifest now in Jesus' name. In Jesus. If you believe that, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight at all? I said, were you blessed tonight at all?